Let's continue to look at weighted voting and we're going to think about how much power each player has in a weighted voting situation. So it seems that a player with more votes has more power, that is to say they're more able to work their will, to have their way. But can we quantify this idea? Can we actually say how much power a player has? For example, if you have twice as many votes as another player, does that mean in some sense you have twice as much power? Now we're going to learn about a mathematical way to measure each player's power. It's going to be called the Bonsoff Power Index. That may seem like kind of a funny word. Bonsoff is someone's name. It's spelled B-A-N-Z-H-A-F. The basic idea is that these numbers will be like slices of a pie. So the pie should be thought of as representing all the power, 100% of the power, or the number 1. And then the individual players will have percentages or fractions, however we want to say it. Now here we're just going to look at an example. The definition, the actual definition of the Bonsoff Power Index will be given in a future lecture. This is an example based on a real historical situation and this situation was analyzed in an article published in 1965 in the Rutgers Law Review by a person named John Bonshoff. You can see he's the one who gave his name then to this um, concept. Of course he didn't call it after himself but later people did. Here is a photograph of John Bonshoff and there is the first page of the article which appeared in the Rutgers Law Review. The name of the article was Weighted Voting Doesn't Work, a Mathematical Analysis. Now here's the situation. There's a county on Long Island in New York. It's actually the county right next to New York City which is called Nassau County. You can see the map of it down below. Uh, you can see that if you know New York City, uh, Brooklyn and Queens are being cut off on the left side there. Shown in pink around the, the border is this county of Nassau. The one further to the east is Suffolk County. It's uh, a suburban county, rather a populous suburban county, especially in the southern part, and a uh, rather wealthy uh, kind of uh, neighborhoods in uh, the north. Uh, anyway, uh, in the 60s there were six districts of varying size, actually greatly varying size in their population, and therefore they were given a varying number of votes when it came to county governance. Now we're going to use the actual districts in Nassau County and we'll use the actual number of votes that they were assigned. So that will be a real historical part of the example. On the other hand, I'm not going to use real motions. I'm going to use silly ones that I've made up. And there they are over in a box on the left. So we're going to look at five imaginary motions before the Nassau County Board of Supervisors. The first one, for example, to build a new sewage treatment plant in the town of Oyster Bay. The last one is to construct a publicly funded yacht club in Hempstead. So we'll go through those one by one. Now here's a table showing how these votes came out. If you look across the top you'll see the numbers 1 through 5 indicating the various motions. Under each number are listed the votes of the representatives of the six districts. So for example let's look in the column for motion 1 and we can see that the votes on this motion were five yeses and one no. Of course, I'm talking about district-wide votes, so these are not actual numbers of votes. Um, this motion, by the way, is the one to build a new sewage treatment plant in Oyster Bay. So, as you can see, Oyster Bay doesn't like that idea and has voted against it, but all the other districts have voted in favor. So, figure this out now. How many votes were there in favor of this motion and how many votes were there against it? 
Well, what you need to do is you need to look at the weights of all the people that voted in favor of the motion. In fact, you're looking at all these weights except the weight of 28, which is given for uh, Oyster Bay. So perhaps it's easiest to say, first of all, the votes against. There were 28 votes against, the 28 votes coming from Oyster Bay. And then if you add up the other weights, you will get 87. By the way, at this point, you probably want to note the total number of votes, and that is 115. And therefore, what should the quota be? Well, it should be just more than half of 115, and that turns out to be 58. So that's an important number for us. The quota is, as we've just said, 58, and again, that's because the total number of votes is 115. All right, now, what was the outcome? What's the decision about what to do? Well, there were 87 votes in favor. There were 28 votes against. So yes, the outcome is yes. We will be, bu be building this sewage treatment plant. All right, on to motion two. This is a motion to raise the sales tax rate by one quarter of one percent. And here, again, you can see the votes. If you were looking at them and thinking of them as single votes, then it would be a tie. But it's not a tie because this is a weighted voting situation. Again, you have to ask, well, how many votes were there in favor and how many votes against? You may want to try that before you see the result that I'm about to give you. Here it is. 54 votes in favor and 61 votes against. And so that motion fails. The outcome is no, we won't raise the sales tax rate. All right, motion three is to close the county swimming pools on Labor Day, which is one week earlier than usual. You can see that Hempstead number one and Oyster Bay have voted against this. All others have voted in favor. That might make you think that it's going to pass, but in fact, if you add up the weights, you'll see that there were 56 votes in favor and 59 against. So that motion goes down. It's a no. The next one, motion four, is to proclaim July 5th as Italian Heritage Day. Well, who would vote against that motion? And especially if you know how many people of Italian heritage live in Nassau County. And in fact, uh, sorry, 115 votes in favor and zero votes against. And of course, that's going to pass. And then finally, we come to the last motion, motion five, which is to construct a publicly funded yacht club in Hempstead. Well, surprise, surprise, the two representatives from Hempstead vote in favor of this motion, and then the others vote against it. However, if you add the weights of those two Hempstead districts, you get 62. So there's 62 votes in favor, only 53 against. So in fact, yes, that passes. So motion five passes. Now when I do this example in a classroom where the students are face to face, I actually ask them to act this out. I appoint six people to act out the parts of the six district representatives. They're not actually very meaty roles for actors. They simply involve saying yes or no. Uh, but afterwards, I ask those individuals, well, what did they think about the situation? And the ones that are representing the very smallest districts, Long Beach and Glen Cove, immediately say they felt that they didn't have any power in that situation. What's most interesting, however, is to look at the situation of North Hempstead, which had 21 votes. That's an awful lot of votes. Uh, and they might feel disgruntled, too. And in fact, they should, because I claim North Hempstead had no power at all. I should say, by the way, that we're using our standard notations up at the very top of the slide. I'm showing you that this was a weighted voting system. As we saw, the quota was 58, so that number is recorded first. And then the weights of the six players are listed. So 31 twice for the two Hempstead districts, and 28, 21, 
2 and 2. So two very small districts, not surprisingly, they don't have any power at all. But I'm claiming that, in fact, even the fourth district, or player four, North Hempstead, with 21 votes, had no power at all. Now, to convince you of this, what I want to do is I want to go through the voting again. Assuming this time that the three biggest districts each get a single vote, and no one else votes at all. So I'm going to do a very much more simplified situation. The three biggest districts, Hempstead number one, Hempstead number two, and Oyster Bay will each get a vote. And the rest, it's as if they're not voting at all because their weight is zero. So here we are. Here's a new chart. However, I have not changed any of the votes. On every motion, Every district is voting exactly the way that they did before. We're just changing the way in which we're determining the outcome. Instead of using these weights, we're simply going to be using weights of 1 and 0. To say it another way, it's as if three of the districts don't even get to vote. In fact, let me show you that. It's as if they're not even there. And only the three districts, Hempstead number one, Hempstead number two, and Oyster Bay get a vote. Okay, so now it's going to be much easier to figure out these totals since the numbers are so small. We can see that motion one had two in favor, one against, so the outcome is yes. And motion two had one in favor, two against, so the outcome is no. The third motion had, again, one in favor, two against, so the outcome is no. Motion 4, that was the one about the Italian Heritage Day. Everybody voted in favor, so that's 3 to 0. And so that's yes. And then finally, on the last motion, 2 in favor, 1 against. And so again, the outcome is yes. Now, what I want you to note here is that even though we conducted a new vote by a new process, all of the motions came out exactly the same way. That is to say, motion 1 and motion 4 and motion 5 were all successful, and motion 2 and motion 3 were unsuccessful. Let me show you. That's exactly what happened when we used the weighted voting system. So this is a general fact in this particular example. I claim that always the result of the vote will be the same as if the top three districts had each just voted in the normal way and the other three weren't allowed to vote at all. So to repeat that, we obtain exactly the same results using this new simplified voting scheme. And here's how we might record it now. The quota now is simply two. It takes two votes to pass something. And player one, player two, player three each get one vote, while the remaining players, four, five, and six, get zero votes. So those three players obviously are totally powerless. They can never have any effect on the outcome of the vote. And for that reason, we're going to call them dummies. That's the actual technical term that's used here. They are said to be dummies. And player one, player two, and player three all had the same power. They had one third of the total power. If you think again of that pie, it's as, e as if each one of them had been given one third of the pie. 